death and altercation happened. This video was sent to WDSU of the incident. We're told Francis did not cause the fight. She never passed words. She never interacted with them no type of way. It was just, your sister's fighting, I'm fighting. The vehicle she was driving flipped over after hitting a fire hydrant. She died from her injuries. Her sisters believe the people involved in the fight also fired those fatal shots. They are hoping arrests will be made. This video is going around of both cars with lights in place. It's a lot going around, so what's going on? I miss my mama a lot. She's pretty funny. She was a nice person. She loved us very much. Saying goodbye is never easy. At 10 years old, it's especially tough. She would do anything for us, and she will always be with me. Trina disputes the police account, telling me there were four women injured, not five. She says three of the victims were her daughters. Oh, right. 29-year-old Raven Marie Francis affectionately known as Ray to her family and friends, was a beloved sister, mother, daughter, and friend, filling each of these roles with love and dedication. Raven was a fiercely devoted mother of four, doing everything in her power to ensure her children had everything they needed and more. She was committed to her family and always put her kids first, working hard to create a life filled with love, laughter, and security for them. Raised in the New Orleans public school system, Raven built a strong foundation for herself forging meaningful and lasting friendships along the way. She took great joy in spending quality time with her loved ones, particularly her children, and was known for her vibrant and outgoing personality. Described by those who knew her as sweet, fun-loving, and full of life, Raven had a taste for the finer things and a heart of gold. Recently, she had bought a new truck and started a job as a security guard, taking pride in her accomplishments and the progress she was making in life. A true fashionista, Raven had a keen eye for style and loved to express herself through her fashion choices. She embraced the lively culture of New Orleans and her love for bounce music reflected the energy and spirit of her city. Whether surrounded by her sisters or close friends, Raven thrived in the company of those she loved, always radiating confidence and joy. Her life was filled with adventure, laughter, and travel, all while she balanced her work and personal life with great care and ambition. Things were going well for Raven. She had big plans for the future, was looking forward to celebrating her upcoming birthday, and felt secure knowing her children were thriving and that she had a strong support system in place. But on a night that was meant to be full of fun and relaxation, Raven and her sisters decided to spend some time together, unaware that this seemingly ordinary decision would soon lead to an unimaginable tragedy, changing their lives forever. In the early morning hours of September 1st, New Orleans police were called to the Shamrock Bar and Grill, located in the 4,100 block of South Carrollton Avenue, following reports of a shooting. Upon arriving at the scene, officers encountered a chaotic and tragic scene. Nearby, they found a crashed vehicle and several people had been shot. Among the victims was an unresponsive adult female. Arrested a suspect in a weekend shooting that left one woman dead and four others injured. NOPD says it began with a fight on Carrollton Avenue early Saturday morning. They believe 24-year-old Shante Mark fired a gun at it as a, at a car rather as it drove away. She was taken into custody today in Chalmette, and police say they expect him to make more arrests. The victim was identified as 29-year-old Raven Francis, who was rushed to a local hospital but tragically succumbed to a gunshot wound to the head just over a month shy of her 30th birthday. Her sister was also injured, shot in the arm, while both her sister and a friend were hurt in the subsequent car crash. The scene was chaotic and heartbreaking, with emergency responders and law enforcement working quickly to assess the situation and provide aid. According to family members and police, Raven had been with two sisters and a friend when an argument broke out in the club's parking lot, escalating into a physical altercation. At some point, Someone opened fire, triggering immediate chaos. As Raven and her sisters tried to escape in their vehicle, they crashed into a fire hydrant and the car flipped over on South Saratoga Street near Baldwin Street. When the car finally came to a stop, the harsh reality of the situation set in. Raven had been fatally shot in the head, her sister was wounded in the arm, and both her sister and friend had been injured in the crash. 
The tragic irony of the situation is that Raven was never one to frequent dangerous places. She had simply gone out that night, only to lose her life over a senseless act of violence. Community members have pointed out that the area surrounding the club has become increasingly problematic, with this incident being just the latest in a series of violent occurrences. In fact, only two months prior, two other women were shot outside the same club in the same parking lot. Many have placed blame on the lack of adequate security at the venue, urging the club to take immediate steps to improve safety so that no other families will have to endure the same heartbreaking loss. New Orleans City Councilman has received numerous complaints about the area surrounding the Shamrock Bar and Grill, with a noticeable uptick in complaints in recent months. While there is an ordinance in place that allows the city to intervene and shut down businesses deemed to be nuisances, the complaints against the Shamrock have not yet reached the threshold required for such action. Before any drastic measures can be taken, the city must consider all potential corrective steps and explore alternative resources from the New Orleans Police Department, NOPD, to address the issues at hand. News outlets reached out to the management of the Shamrock Bar and Grill for comment, but have yet to receive a response. Similarly, questions posed to the NOPD regarding the recent shooting incident were met with limited information, with the department only stating that the investigation is ongoing. The lack of transparency and response has left many in the community seeking answers about both the specific incident and the broader issues of safety in the area. It escalates at night. The human behavior is what it is, you know, so how do you control that? The brawl broke out in the same parking lot where police say two women were shot on July 13th. Anything that addresses it on any level, I would be in support of, whether that's more police, stronger security. New Orleans City Council member Joe DeRusso says he's long received complaints about the two lane corridor and over the last few months, an increase in complaints related to Shamrock Bar and Grill. There is an ordinance that allows the city to step in and shut down nuisance businesses, but DeRusso says the complaints against Shamrock have not reached that level. There's only so many places NOPD or police departments can be, but then B, what are businesses doing as part of being responsible operators to try and prevent something like this from happening? He says the city must first consider all potential corrective steps and alternative NOPD resources available. Is this an isolated incident? Or are we now really starting to see a pattern? The tension is really being turned to right here to see what next steps should be. Raven's mother emphasized that she didn't want her daughter's legacy to be defined by gun violence, but by the love, laughter, and memories she created with her family and friends. And anything she had to do for her kids. The mother of 29-year-old Raven Marie Francis says her daughter leaves behind four children, the oldest 10, the youngest just six months old. She don't be out here like that in these streets. And she just so happened to come out this, that night and lose her life behind somebody else's problems. <laughs> My baby didn't deserve this. Trina Francis wants her grandbabies to remember the good times, the activities, and trips taken with their mom. They're gonna miss her so much. She was special to them. <laughs> Only thing I could do is hold them. Grieving loved ones came together to honor the life of a woman who meant so much to so many and whose light was tragically extinguished far too soon. Raven's untimely death left a deep void, particularly for her four children, who now face the world without their mother, the one person who meant everything to them. In the midst of this heartbreaking loss, Raven's mother made a heartfelt plea to the public, urging anyone with information that could lead to an arrest to come forward. She expressed a desire for her grandchildren to remember their mother, not for the way she was taken from them, but for the joyful moments they shared, like the fun activities, the family outings, and the trips they took together. It all started around 2.40 Sunday morning, when police say two parties got into a fight outside the Shamrock Bar and Grill near the corner of South Carrollton and Tulane Avenue. They do need to have better security over here, just with the area and just with the crowd, you know, too many things pop off. The NOPD says one of the parties was a group of five women, all of whom were shot when trying to drive away. 
During the chaotic escape, police say the group's driver struck a fire hydrant and flipped their car at the intersection of South Solomon and Bowdoin Streets. This happened just down the street from Jalen Dorothy's house. She wants people to calm down, be careful consuming alcohol, and put the guns down. Be mindful, don't be quick to react. You never know what somebody else has or what they're going through. Trina disputes the police account, telling me there were four women injured, not five. She says three of the victims were her daughters and one was their friend. She says Raven was shot in the head and died. One of her sisters was grazed by a bullet to her arm and the other two were injured in the crash, not by gunfire. Trina says Raven had recently bought a new truck and started a job as a security guard. She calls Raven sweet and outgoing, saying she liked to have fun, had expensive taste, and a heart of gold. She's my Hollywood girl. She loves to get her face made up, her hair done. She liked to hang out with her sisters. That was her best friends. Her best friends were by her side until the very end. With the help of God and family and prayers, we're going to get through this. Initially, there were no arrests in the case, but three days after the shooting, the New Orleans Police Department, NOPD, announced the arrest of 24-year-old Shantae Mark, who was charged with a second-degree murder. New details surrounding the incident revealed that Mark had intentionally waited for Raven and her sisters, along with their friend, to leave the Shamrock Bar and Grill before following them in another car and opening fire. Surveillance footage cited by law enforcement showed Mark exiting the bar and running to the far end of the parking lot. Court records indicate that prior to the shooting, Mark had been involved in a violent brawl between two large groups of women, and authorities believe the shooting may have been an act of retaliation. The tragedy of the situation was made even more heartbreaking by the fact that both Raven and Mark were mothers of four children. Now two sets of children were left without their mothers, forced to navigate life without the one person who should have been there to guide and protect them. According to a police affidavit after the brawl, Mark returned to the scene with a handgun and used it to strike a female patron five times in the head and shoulder. Witnesses reported that Mark then left the area but did not go far. Instead, she got into a white Nissan Altima where she waited for the situation to calm down. About 15 minutes later, Mark began driving in tandem with a black SUV, circling the parking lot twice before positioning themselves near the victims. Mark reportedly called for the SUV to come and pick her up, and once the two vehicles were parked, she switched cars and began following the victims. The shooting occurred just two and a half blocks away from the Shamrock as Mark and the other vehicle closed in on their target. Further investigation into Mark's past revealed that she had been arrested for murder once before. In 2023, she was a suspect in the killing of her ex-boyfriend, but prosecutors ultimately dropped the charges after reviewing the case. According to the Orleans Parish District Attorney's Office, the evidence was insufficient to prove that Mark had participated in the murder. Mark's bond was set at $1 million by the Orleans District Court Magistrate Commissioner, and she may face additional charges of aggravated battery. Law enforcement also indicated that more arrests are expected in connection with the case. The situation continues to unfold as the investigation into the shooting remains active, leaving a community devastated by both the violence and the lives lost. The lesson in Raven Francis' story is a stark reminder of how quickly life can change and how senseless violence can have devastating, far-reaching consequences. Raven's death, which occurred after an argument spiraled into gunfire, underscores the fragility of life and the unpredictable nature of violence. It also highlights the importance of personal safety and the need for increased responsibility in places where large groups gather, particularly when there is a history of violence. Additionally, Raven's tragic fate reveals the heartbreaking impact that violence has on families and communities. Raven was not the type of person to be involved in street conflicts, and yet she lost her life due to a senseless confrontation that escalated into tragedy. Her story serves as a reminder of how one reckless moment can shatter not only the life of the victim, but also the lives of their loved ones. And finally, this story also raises awareness about the responsibility of businesses, such as the club in question, to ensure the safety of their patrons. With previous incidents of violence at the same location, it becomes clear that more needs to be done to prevent such tragedies from happening again. The call for better security and greater accountability is a crucial lesson for everyone in the community. In the end, this reminds us of the need for peace, safety, and compassion in our interactions, and the urgent need to address the root causes of violence before more lives are lost. Rest in peace, Raven Francis.